Sport Fishing on the Fly is brought to you by Togan's Fly Shop, Maui Jim Sunglasses, and Hardy Rods and Reels. Punished. It, Phillips can be a tricky lake, can be finicky, but we're here, it's May, should be prime corona mid-season, but we've had really, really warm weather, and that's the problem. When you get really warm weather, the fish tend to slide into deeper waters. So, you know what, we're going to try some deep line corona minting. We may have to, of course, bulldog, probably put on the tequila. I may try some new disco blobs that we have, but you have to search out the, out the fish. So, it's Phillips Lake today as we take you sport fishing. So we're anchored in 20 feet of water and the shoals gradually coming up. So a 50 foot cast will put us in 13, 14 feet of water. Okay, perfect. And that seems to be where the bugs have been coming off in the past several days. Yeah, what do you think, Bri? How deep should we hang it? 13. 13 feet Let's down? try 13. Okay. If we touch bottom, then we know we just yeah, bump just up a bit. But. Okay, perfect. Same chronomid as last oh, yeah. time, Bri. First okay. flip out there with it. First cast. Yeah, they're on them. We just we just had Water's to find super, some. super clear. Yeah, it's a beautiful panask. Yeah, nice healthy fish. The bugs are just starting to go now. Starting to go. Oh yeah. Got something in them, Dale. Good. There's a beautiful Phillips Lake triploid panask rainbow. Look at his jam. It's jammed it's at the jammed. end. Oh, no, that's what we love to see. It was too jammed. <laughs> Look at that. Oh my goodness. Oh. <laughs> it was it was jammed packed. I love to see that plug. Isn't that unbelievable? Good one, Dale. Yeah. He's right over by the weed. He's a big fish. He's a really big fish. Okay, come on back, baby. Oh, we got a good hook set in this guy. We've had some troubles. We've had several lost fish and some technical <laughs> failures. Yeah. Breakoffs. Yeah. Oh, lost them. No, we've had nothing but failures. <laughs> We've had our fair share of, of losses and technical failures. That's what happens in a big fish lake, eh? It's funny, the, the bugs that are hatching are bigger, but they want to eat that small they fly. Eat the small one. Boy, you just can't horse them in. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I may have to pop that indicator. I, I really wedged her in there. It popped on me when I was casting. So. Boy. Oh, come on. Oh. <sighs> nice fat fish. Look at this. Oh. All right, here he goes. So same chronomid as last time, little size 14, hanging 14 feet. 14 feet. 14, and 14. And we're getting so our revenge. We're getting our <laughs> revenge. <laughs> so tell us about the lake. It's a rehabilitated lake, eh? You're like it's rehabilitated this lake? Yeah, so Phillips Lake in 2010 was uh, rehabilitated uh, due to uh, legal introductions of bass and uh, perch and I believe uh, pumpkin seed and uh, prior to that it, this was a pretty good brook trout fishery but uh, the water in Phillips has a connection to the Shuswap 
So the decision was made, we got to get rid of these illegally introduced fish. So treated in 2010, and then in 2011, stocking began with triploid brook trout, triploid Fraser Valley rainbows, and triploid panask rainbows. And now, uh, in 2019, you're, we're seeing the peak of uh, the growth of those uh, non-reproductive fish. This is a great year to be fishing the lake, and uh, it just goes to show you how productive this lake is, but the fishery was totally destroyed with the introduction of those uh, spiny rate fish, and it's obviously back in production to what it should be historically and uh, hopefully forever. Boy, they are strong, healthy fish. Oh. Nice. Beauty. Another nice fish. Look at that. Classic Panask. Very few spots above the lateral line. But a gorgeous fish. Oh. Oh. Good job, yeah. Dale. The 14, 14 is working for 14. me, Bri. 14 foot leader, 14 size crawdy. Oh. <laughs> They're all in one little hole. They eh? were all fishing in the same spot, but I'm just in between the two bobs. Maybe you guys are attracting them in for me. Might be a little brook trout, eh? Might be a brookie. We'll see. Boy, it's fighting. It's smaller. Looks yeah. like, I think it is a brook trout. It's a brookie. Yeah, they put brookies in here too, eh? Yeah, it's a triploid brookie. Okay, that's nice in the little brook trout, Bry. So why brook trout? Why did they put brook trout in? Well, brook trout, we put them in, uh, they're put in to, to provide a diversity of fishing experiences. But since 1996, all brook trout stockings in the province have been sterile. They were the first fish we sterilized. And, uh, <laughs> and the reason why they're sterilized is that a diploid brook trout can interbreed with bull trout, which are a species of concern in the province, and the offspring of the interbreeding are sterile. So you impact bull trout populations. So in order to, to maintain a stocking program of brookies in the province, they've, ha they've had to be non-reproductive. Ah, I see. Well, he's a fat little and guy. They, these guys grow big in this lake. <laughs> nice though, nice colors. And we, we have a loon <laughs> Looking for lunch. Free meal. Under the boat. So just uh Oh that loon. Beautiful little brookie. Plump. Go, go, go. Don't go swim that way. He's okay. He did loon didn't <laughs> see him. Oh. oh. Let's see if he comes <laughs> up with him. That could have been a perfect gulp lunch for a loon. <laughs>
A little. Okay, nice little, little chunky. Porky. Okay, good. So Don is going to go to the bench and tie us up a fly this week. Might as well go there now. Today on the bench, I want to tie you up the shadow coronamid. Now this is a coronamid we use a lot. It's one of our favorite patterns, and it's really when the fish are finicky and they want something that just has that silhouette, and that's why it's called the shadow. Make sure you have these materials ready before you tie. For the hook, we'll use a Mustad C53S size 16. We'll tie with some 12 watt black nano silk. We'll use a 3 32nd inch black nickel bead with a white tip for the bead. Some gunmetal gray flashaboo for the body. Some black flashaboo for the first rib. Some fine black wire for the second rib. And some 6 aught black nano silk for the thorax. So to start the fly off, I put the bead onto the hook and of course the white tip always towards the eyelet and that will limitate the gills, saves me from tying the gills in. And to start off, we're just gonna put on our thread, create a little bit of a base layer. Now that we have the thread tied in, I'm gonna tie it in reverse order of how I'm gonna create the body. So I'm gonna start with the second rib, then the first rib, and then I'm gonna tie in the body material. So right now I'm gonna start with my fine black wire, and let's tie it in. And keep it off the back for tying the second rib in later. Now I've taken one strand of my black flashaboo, which we'll use as the first rib a little bit later. But just tie it back and keep it off the back for ribbing it after. Now that we have both ribs tied in on sitting off the back, I've taken three strands of my gunmetal gray flashaboo. And we're going to tie it in right to the back. Now that we have all our materials tied in, what I'm going to do is whip finish my 12 aught thread. And I like to tie with the 12 aught to start because it keeps the body nice and thin at the back. It doesn't bulk it up too much. And then what we're going to do is tie on our 6 aught thread so we can build up a bit of a body and taper the body and actually create a nice thorax in the fly after. So all I do is continue to wrap in my 6 aught thread to create a tapered body. Once we have a nice tapered body established and our thread is behind the eyelet, we're going to take our, our gray flashaboo, our gunmetal gray flashaboo, and start wrapping forward to create the body. Now that we have the body tied in, we're going to take our one strand of black flashaboo and create our first rib. And make about, you know, six to seven turns up the fly. Now that we have the first rib tied in, I'm going to take our fine black wire and create the second rib and I try to try to almost follow where I put in the first rib. When you get behind the bead, instead of cutting off the, the wire, just get it close to the hook and just wiggle it back and forth. It's such fine wire, just wiggle back and forth and that'll break, a real nice clean break. Now to finish off the fly, what I'm going to do is whip finish a couple times and I'm just going to create that nice black thorax. This is a very, very dark fly, why it's called the shadow and it just makes a very pronounced profile in the water. So whip finish it, cut off your excess 
And then we're going to do is take some of our UV coating and give it a quick coat. And hit it with the UV light to seal up that UV coating. So there it is, the finished shadow chronomid. This is one fly we go to when the fish are being finicky. They, you know, when the fish are really tending to hit the smaller chronomids and they really don't want an aggressive looking fly, this is our go-to pattern. Almost, right here. Where is it? Oh. Where is he? Oh, we got him. We got him. Oh, that's a toad. Oh, yeah. Look at the chronomid. Look at that. Right on the, right on the top lip. Right where you expect to get him. Right there. Flies out. Look at that. Yours. Here we go. Oh, oh. Okay, you can let go of mine too. Oh, <laughs> Here comes Dawn's. <laughs> oh, look at that. Look at all that. Oh my. So how big, Bri? What do you what do you think? Those weighed? Oh, over six, both of them. Easy over six, yeah. Just but I can't be. believe how strong they are. And they're just starting to move again. So you know the morning, you guys worked it hard. You guys were dialed in with the chronos, yeah. right? We had the little crony on. And then in 15 to 20 feet of water. Yeah. Now we've seen them all cruising in four or six feet. Like it's being yeah. fantastic. And guess what? We're getting a fresky riffle. Yeah. <laughs> and I love that. So you know what? We got some more, more great action coming up. Oh. They sure go in spurts though. Yeah, go in so spurts. Another nice rainbow though. But how much water did you take him out of? How deep there? Yeah. Five feet, six feet. We've had to move out 14 feet and five feet. You have to move, boy. A lot, watched a lot of people just staying stationary and we've been moving back and forth and having good success. So. There we go. There, there he is. Go. Nice rainbow. Uh, they're they are spunky, they're nice. They are beautiful fish here. Last cast out there. Well, Bry, it's <laughs> been quite a day. It's uh, highs and lows, and picky fish, and then fish are willing to bite in really shallow water. Well, shallow, deep, we shallow. moved around a lot. That was the key and, to the day. We, and the key was finding the bugs coming off because they weren't coming off everywhere. Exactly. And they come off for 20 minutes, quit. Yeah. Oh. But beautiful fish caught everything today. Brook trout, Fraser Valleys, yeah. Panast. Yeah. It's a great, and great fish. Quality fishery. fish. Exactly. And, uh, it's such a productive piece of water and it's, it's just fishing in its prime right now. Redemption Day on Phillips Lake. So we got some people to thank. I certainly want to thank the Prestige Inn. Again, we were at the Salmon Arm Prestige Inn right on Shuswap Lake. Great accommodations. They put us up for these last few days. No, no, it was great. Yeah, we had a great time and uh, thanks to Phillips Lake. Yeah, so take care, preserve our waters, and we'll see you next time when we take you sport fishing on the farm.